there's a lot of confusion out there, and there's no question that a master's degree can help you advance your career, it can help you make more money, and it can definitely be an asset to your engineering journey. However, after 10 years on the field as a mechanical engineer, and after working with many engineers with different master's degrees and even PhDs, not every student goes into grad school for good reasons. And I'm gonna elaborate on what I mean here in a few seconds. So in this video, we're gonna dive deep into the worst reasons and best reasons to go to grad school so that you can get a clearer vision for yourself and you can make the best decisions for your own journey. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you crush the like button and consider subscribing. Okay, so let's jump right into this. And one of the things that people, <laughs> one of the worst reasons that you can go to grad school for when you are in engineering school is if you're going to grad school because you are afraid to move on and you want to delay facing the truth, you want to delay going into the real world, then that's dumb. Let me just tell you, Falada, that's just dumb. If you want to just delay your entry to the real world and you don't want to work just yet because of many reasons, right? Maybe you think that, hey, I, I don't feel like I'm ready yet or I don't know what I'm doing. I want to go get more training. Well, that's a really expensive way to get more training, especially if you're not sure about whether or not you want to commit to a certain graduate field of studies. And let me share a secret with you. And after being in the industry for quite a while, when you graduate engineering school, when you're undergrad, that's as ready as you're going to be. That's as ready as you need to be, to be completely honest. Uh, when you graduate after four or five years of engineering school, that's pretty much all the training that you need in order to go into industry and start making a difference and start contributing in a positive way. And the reason for this is school, it's only designed to give you a basic level of understanding of the engineering principles, how they're applied, the physics, chemistry, biology, and everything that goes in engineering. But what you really are going to use what really is going to make a difference in your development as a young professional in the engineering industry is going to be you being on the field, you learning hands-on, you interacting with other engineers, with other people that are in industry. That's going to be the best training that you can get, you honing in on your abilities and your skills. So if you're thinking that you're going to get that in grad school, at least at the magnitude that you would get in an industry, then that's completely just not what happens. You get the best training when you are in industry, hands-on, working with other engineers. So when you graduate engineering school, that's as ready as you need to be. Now, another reason or another bad reason that people go to grad school for is when people believe it's a guarantee that they will go up the corporate ladder. They think that a master's degree is going to guarantee them getting that promotion. They think that a master's degree is going to guarantee them a high ranking position in a certain organization. That's not really what happens. What really ends up making a difference in your journey is number one, your, how competitive you are in your craft, how good you are in your work, how much you get along with people, politics. It's one of those things that you have to learn how to deal with and consider politics to be a social skill, one more social skill that you need to learn. Because I've witnessed in the past when there are highly competitive engineers that don't get positions when they apply for leadership ones, simply because, or I want to say allegedly, <laughs> because they are not well liked by the people that are on top and they're making the hiring decisions. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if you think about it, if you truly are honest with yourself, if you are someone that is hiring a person and you have person A, person B, a person A has a master's degree, but you know, person B, you get along with that person a lot better. The person B can still get the job done. And so if that person is more fun to be around, it's, if that person is also competitive, so that person is going to take the edge, is going to take a lead on the person that technically speaking has a master's degree and all this knowledge, right? Because at the end of the day, we're human beings and humans like to work with people that they like. So unless, of course, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, this is what I see happens in industry. So a master's degree, now, 
does it help go up the corporate ladder? Does it help you be eligible for positions of high ranking leadership in companies, organizations? Of course, it does help. But does it guarantee it? No, absolutely not. So if you believe it's going to guarantee going up the corporate ladder, that's not what's going to happen. It will help, yes, but you have to also take care of other areas that I just discussed a little earlier. Now, the third, this is probably the worst reason to go to grad school, and that is to continue partying. I know that some engineering students are going to look at me, engineering grads are going to look at me like, yo, I, <laughs> I did not party once when I was in engineering school. And, and hey, if you are someone that went out and you lived it up in college and you went always from social event to social event and living, you're living your life. And hey, I met plenty of engineering students who were somehow able to balance all of that. They were really good at time management. So they had a social life and they were able to, hey, do well in school. But some people just want to continue having fun and carry that into grad school. When in reality, grad school is a lot more responsibility. It's a lot more involvement. So it's, it's going to be a lot you're going to be held accountable for more things, especially also if you have to work in order to get your tuition reimbursed, which one of the best ways to go to grad school for, by the way. So the bottom line here is if you're going to think that you're going to go to grad school to continue partying, dumb, absolutely terrible idea. Now, the fourth worst reason to go to grad school here is, drum roll, please. It is if you're bored and you need something to do. <laughs> I know, I know. Some of you guys are thinking, wait, what? That's a really dumb reason to go to grad school. Absolutely. I know. And it's a really expensive way to start exploring your curiosity, right? Because when you go to grad school, you're talking about forty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 worth of, I mean, a degree, whether it is debt or whether it is you getting your company's paying for it. It's a huge investment. So it's a decision that you should not be taking lightly. So if you're someone that is unhappy at work and you realize, man, like, I don't know what to do. Like you're walking around, like, you don't like the work that you're doing, or maybe you are after graduation, you find yourself unemployed and you are at home. You're thinking, huh, what do I do with my life? Hey, why don't I go to grad school? Of course, that's not a really good idea. It's not cost effective because you may find yourself on the other side of the fence thinking, hey, I went to undergrad and I couldn't find a job. I didn't know what I was doing. I decided to go to grad school. I invested all this time and money. And then now after grad school, I still can't find a job. And now I'm just going to give up on engineering altogether. There are instances where this happens. I'm going to be transparent with you here. A couple of days ago, I got a comment from a young professional. I don't know how old this person was, but he was saying that he went through engineering school and he went to grad school even. And at the end of the day, he didn't find a job and he decided to say, you know what? Screw the engineering journey. I'm just going to go and open my own business. And now he owns a restaurant. Now, does this happen often? Probably like very, very small percentage of time. I want to say that majority of engineers get out there and get positions, maybe not in engineering, but even more related fields like science or finance business. But the thing is, we have to, in order to, for you to get scared at this type of situation when somebody couldn't find a job, we have to ask ourselves why that person couldn't find a job. Was that person not working properly? Was that person fixing up his, his resumes correctly? getting out there and applying to jobs and putting himself out there. So there are many parameters that go into finding a job, which by the way, if you need guidance, I do have a PDF that is going to help you walk you through the whole process of finding a job, the engineer's guide to get jobs. So I'm going to link it in the description here. But the thing is, I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions if you are interested in having me guide you through your resume, cover letter, and job searching process, by the way. So I'm going to leave a link in the description here of this video. But the bottom line here is don't get scared. Don't be afraid by these types of situations. Very, very, it's almost like outliers out there when they somebody just leaves completely engineering and they go to another industry. Does it happen? Yes. Are they common? Based on what I've seen, not that common. So... Just because you hear these horrible stories, then don't think that, that that's, going to, that's going to be you. So the next reason, because you're getting information from here, from the channel, and the information is going to help you get a job, of course. Now, let's go over the positive reasons, the best reasons to go to grad school. And number one, if you want to come up with a solution to a specific problem in society, or maybe you see somebody that's going into a problem and, hey, you want to help, you want to dig deeper into a specific field, specific subject, and you say, I'm going to figure that out. 
for example, one of the things that my senior design team, my capstan, one of the things that we were doing is we were trying to figure out a way to help airplanes emergency land safely. And this type of work was inspired by Flight 1549, if I'm not mistaken. If you guys remember back in 2009, uh, Flight 1549, I'm actually going to show you here on the screen what I mean. Well, this airplane landed in the water. And let me show you here what I mean here. Uh, so if you take a look at this airplane, there's a lot of people on the wing. So this airplane had a flock of birds go into the engine and it provided an engine malfunction. And what happened was, okay, the pilot said, all right, guys, we need to get out there and we need to land on the river. They were not going to make it to the next airport. Now, this was even there was even a movie made about this situation, U.S. Airways Flight 1549. But what I'm saying here, the bottom line is, if you are someone that says, hey, I need to figure out or I want to figure out a solution to a certain problem, then a grad school then is a great idea. Another really good example that I found is there was a psychology student who went and did research in grad school and she wanted to make the connection and study mental health and emotions. And the reason why she was inspired and motivated to do this type of work was because a close friend of hers took her life time sometime before she decided to make to go in for that field so that gave her the motivation and the intrinsic desire to go and explore that field so that other people so that, so that she can help other people prevent making that decision so if you are someone that has this intrinsic motivation i want to say that i want you are unstoppable 100 percent because you, deep down it's something that you really want to pursue and you're not going to stop until you make that happen uh, when you have that type of intrinsic motivation and desire, you really plow through anything. Like it's just one of the most powerful emotions that you can have when you have that deep desire to make something happen. You're just not going to be stopped. I, I guarantee you that. You're not going to stop until you get there. Okay. Now, the second best reason to go to grad school, my friends, uh, commitment to a field where a graduate degree is useful. Now, of course, a little bit ago, I talked about how if you don't know whether or not a grad school degree is going to help, then it's best to hold off for a little bit and go to work for a few seconds, for, for a few years. But if you know exactly how a graduate degree is going to help you, so let's say that you are a senior or junior in engineering school and you're thinking, okay, I interned at this company. I noticed that the engineering director has a master's degree in mechanical engineering or any other, or maybe an MBA, and you say, you know, I really want to get that position in the future, or I really want to be an expert in a certain field, I want to be a lead researcher, then, and you notice that those types of positions in companies, or maybe you want to open your own company, and you realize, hey, you know, I really want to get there, and I know that a master's degree is going to help me. Then in that sense, you already know exactly how a master's degree is going to help you get there. So it's a, it's a good idea. It's That's really good reason to go to grad school when you know exactly how that degree is going to help you. Now, the third reason, third best reason to go to grad school is if you want to pivot careers. And let's say that one of these days I'm walking down the stairs and I hit my head on the stairs and I fall and I decide to go into software engineering. If for those of you who know me, that have been watching the channel for a bit, you guys know that I don't like coding, hate it, spice it. But it's a really good skill to have. Absolutely, 100%. It's very, extremely useful. One of the best fields out there in general, like any field out there. So, so let's say that I'm going down the stairs and I hit my head and I say, hey, I like programming. In fact, I love programming and I want to become a software engineer. Well, with the experience that I have in the naval industry and also with my background in education and mechanical engineering, it would be very difficult for me at this point in my career to make that pivot and switch to a software engineer role. Well, one thing that I could do is go to a master's degree and say, you know, I want to get into cybersecurity or I want to get into software engineering and development and back end, front end, full stack, 
whatever the language of software engineers use nowadays. Well, one of the things that I can do is I can go to school and get training and get a master's degree in the field that I want to become an expert at. So that right there is going to take me from having a mechanical engineering career and it's going to help me pivot and steer my journey to the software engineering world. So that's one thing that you can do if you are someone that is thinking, hey, you know, um, I don't want to do mechanical engineering anymore. I don't want to do, let's say, that you're doing a structural analysis for airplanes. Now you really want to do HVAC. Let's just say that you want to do a heat, heat, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Or maybe you want to do construction management. Whatever it happens to be, if you want to pivot, then a master's degree can help you get there. Now, another good reason to last couple of reasons that I'm going to share here with you. Number four here, if you want to become an expert in a certain area, I really don't need to explain this any further. Of course, a master's degree is going to help you. Again, especially if you are someone that already knows where you want to work, if you know that, hey, you know, I really want to become an expert in nanotechnology and material science and how like genetics engineering or whatever, things like that, right? And so at that point, then if you know exactly where you want to be, I think a master's degree is going to help you get there most likely, especially if you want to be a lead researcher, an expert. And the last best reason to go to grad school is, in my personal opinion, if you will get it paid for, especially if it's right after undergrad. And honestly, that's one of the ways where I personally, I would have gone to grad school for. When I was a senior in engineering, I had that interest of going to grad school and my professor was even encouraging me to go to grad school because he wanted me to do research for him. But at the end of the day, my grades weren't high enough that I would just be accepted into grad school immediately. I had to take the GRE. At the same time, I didn't really plan it well enough that I could do a five-year program as a master's degree, not to mention that I did not have secure funding yet. Also, I did not have I didn't have a way that I could get grad school paid for. And I was almost deep down rushing myself to get into industry so that I could start making money and so that I could start paying off my student loans and paying back my family members to help me along my college journey. So there were a lot of parameters. Like I said, there's a lot of things that go into you making a decision to get a master's degree. So when I left engineering school, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to go into industry for one year, two years, and then I'm going to make a decision to go to grad school. I definitely, I definitely do want to get my master's degree. Well, when I arrived in industry, I started getting a better vision. I started getting a clear understanding of how industry works, how far a bachelor's degree can take me, how much money I'll be making. And I even took the GRE after one year of being into industry. I sent my GRE to the school, and but I never really applied. I never got accepted because I never ended up applying. And after a few more months, I decided, you know what? I don't need to go to grad school. I don't see myself going up the corporate ladder. I don't want to go up the corporate ladder. It's just like at one point, at some point, it just becomes too political. It's really not an environment for me. And so I decided, you know what? A master's degree is really not going to help me get anywhere. So I decided not to pursue it. Now, but had I had the chance to get it paid for when I was just graduating engineering school, then I would have definitely made the time and effort to make that happen. So at the end of the day, guys, of course, remember that it's your, your decision. Don't let professors, don't let people encourage you and pressure you into making the decision to go to grad school. Don't go to grad school because you want to keep partying because you're afraid to move on from to the real world. That doesn't make any sense. Don't, going to grad school because you're bored and you just need something to do. That's a really expensive way to figure out your career and figure out your life. So if you're not sure, if you're thinking, Alex, what do I do, man? Like I'm in a place right now where I don't know if this is good for me or not. Then I encourage you. I highly encourage you to go into industry, go figure it out there. You're going to be exposed to a variety of different fields. You're going to speak with a lot of very bright minds from industry, other engineers with masters, PhDs. And at that point, you'll be able to make a decision for yourself and say, hey, I think a master's degree is going to help you. And then you go back to school and you get it paid for by your company. You take it one step at a time. And in no time, you're going to get there. Not to mention, sometimes you don't need to have a master's of science in order to move up the corporate ladder. Sometimes you just need an MBA 
And let's face it, an MBA, generally speaking, I mean, depending on where you get the MBA, but generally speaking, an MBA is easier, of course, than a master's of science and engineering. So that's where I'm going to stop with this video. If you enjoyed this video, by the way, make sure that you drop a like, consider subscribing. And with all this being said, I'll see you all on the next one. Take care. Peace.